Welcome to Pharmacology of the Synapse. This week, we will have a brief lecture on silent synapses. We'll go over the definition of the silent synapse, how it was discovered, and their proposed role. A silent synapse can describe any synapse that does not produce neurotransmission. However, silent synapses have come to describe a specific type of glutamatergic synapse that contains postsynaptic NMDA receptors but lacks AMPA receptors. AMPA and NMDA receptors both have glutamate as the endogenous agonist. AMPA and NMDA receptors are both ion channels that allow cations to enter the cell. Normally, a functional synapse contains both AMPA and NMDA receptors. So why does eliminating AMPA receptors produce a silent synapse? To answer this question, we'll examine the NMDA receptor. The NMDA receptor requires two agonists, glutamate, and the coagonist glycine. However, even if both agonists are present, the channel will not open because of a magnesium block in the pore that occurs when the cell is at resting membrane potential, which is hyperpolarized minus 70 millivolts. The only way the magnesium block is alleviated is to raise the membrane potential to more positive potentials, which is usually provided by the AMPA receptor activation. So no AMPA receptors, no magnesium block removal, and no NMDA signal. Silent synapses can be unsilenced by insertion of AMPA receptors into the synapse. Activation of AMPA receptors causes sodium to enter the cell and raises the membrane potential, eliminating the magnesium block of the NMDA receptors. The NMDA receptors are permeable to calcium, whereas AMPA receptors are usually impermeable and the calcium influx produces full depolarization and activation of signaling. Silent synapses are a relatively new discovery, first described in 1995 by two separate groups. One group was led by Dr. Dizzy Liao, currently in the Department of Neuroscience at the University of Minnesota. Their electrophysiology experiments demonstrated the existence of ampleless glutamatergic synapses. So how did they do it? First, they recorded from CA1 neurons in the hippocampus and clamped the cell at minus 60 millivolts in a hyperpolarized state. Second, they stimulated the presynaptic connection, causing glutamatergic release onto the recording cell. Nothing happened at minus 60 millivolts. Most trials failed to find any synaptic transmission or EPSCs, excitatory postsynaptic currents. So you'll see here in the blue boxes that this uh, did not produce any EPSC uh, amplitude. They then artificially increased the cell current to 40 millivolts, which is a positive potential to mimic AMPA activation. Stimulation now produced detectable synaptic transmission which is indicated by the increase in EPSC amplitude and the fact that um, now you see uh, action potentials at the depolarized state. This was blocked by NMDA antagonists. So what do we know about silent synapses? We still don't know much about their role in physiology. They are mainly expressed during development and are limited to GABAergic neurons in the mature nervous system. Unsilencing of these synapses play an important role in long-term potentiation, and abnormal retention and generation of silent synapses is thought to be involved in addiction and other neurological disorders such as autism, fragile X syndrome, and chronic pain.